Hi, this is Agent Retinals, episode 12, week 13. We come with another great case. This is a macular hole surgery. This is our group photo, our residents and fellows all together. This is fubag.org, our institution. This is Goiânia, Brazil. We did our retinal fellowship in Toronto, Canada. Dr. Nakamura, this is another inverted yes, vitrectomy. Yes, Dr. Lorena, this is another inverted vitrectomy. Join our retinal fellowship in Goiânia, Brazil. This is Goiânia, Brazil, our city. Dr. Nakamura, what the case is? The case, Dr. Francisco, is a Mac hole surgery. It's a great case. I am Matthew Hill and this is HN Retinols. This channel is designed for ophthalmologists, residents and fellows to better understand retinal surgery from the iBank Foundation in Guani, Brazil. Let's begin. Let's yeah, enjoy we're going to enjoy it. Dr. Nakamura. For sure. This is a OCT of a macular hole. First of all, we perform a core vitrectomy very carefully, trying to detach the hyaloid from uh, the main points of adherence. We also do peripheral vitrectomy and uh, trying to get the hyaloid and reaching for it as much as possible. As you see, it's being elevated right now and uh, we are detaching the hyaloid now from the retina. You gotta do movements. And uh, as you see, you grab the hyaloid and the vitreous as well and you keep doing your core vitrectomy. You gotta be extra careful, even if you take care of your positions. You might get this uh, peripheral retinal detachment, as you see, the retina elevated in the periphery. But the lens is crystal clear, you don't need to worry about it. Why do you do partial air fluid exchange? Because doing air fluid exchange, now partial, because you wanna insert, you wanna put brilliant blue to see uh, the internal limiting beam brand it's going to be great to see and uh, now with a contact lens it's got to be a macular lens this is a focal one you got a very good view and uh, you see the internal limiting membrane and uh, you grab it and uh, you re-grab it and uh, this one is uh, kind of uh, fluffy, but uh, there's not a problem. You get again the same site. Do all surgeons perform the same technique for ILM removal? No, Matthew, of course not. I'm doing here this uh, grab and regrab technique, and uh, people, some people like doing this uh, tenno technique. They scrap the the tenno, it's a diamond shaped forceps and, uh, and to lift the edge, but I prefer grabbing and grabbing technique as long as you see with a good technique and a good lens and contact lens, you see the membrane, you lift it up and uh, that's okay. But there are far more techniques and even some people do not use uh, staining but there are different types of uh, dyes to, to stain the internal limiting membrane. It's like doing a rexis. I like staining, you see better, and uh, it's safer. You see, it's like a, a capsule rexis, but uh, of the internal limiting membrane. What if you go too deep? How can you not damage the retina with this maneuver? Well, if we go too deep, we might damage the retina. We've got to, got to be extra careful. What if you go too deep? Yeah, we, we have to 
Yeah, you, you all have the same doubt. You cannot go too deep. That is, that's a secret, but you've got to see it. And now I'm doing endo laser, and by doing endo laser to repair that peripheral retinal detachment we just saw. But that's okay, it's far away in the periphery. And uh, we're going to be doing now the another ex air fluid exchange. And by doing that, uh, we attach the retina and uh, we make sure there is much uh, air and not fluid inside the eye. We do some more laser on the air and uh, we finish the case right now. Don't forget for patient positioning afterwards. Thank you very much. Visit our channel in YouTube, Hudson Nakamura.